Well, here we have another DVD review. Let me just spit out this chewing gum to understand uh, better what I'm saying here. Neil Craig's 50 movie pack, Nightmare Worlds. Hours of sci-fi tales collected on 12 double-sided DVDs. Fifty great features that explore the boundaries of science fiction and horror. Enter a new dimension of terror as the planet faces extinction in the day the sky exploded. The Doomsday Machine, End of the World, and The Mistress of Atlantis. Face is alien. Face alien threats and alien species. Embryo, UFO target Earth, and attack from space. Discover hideous creatures and beast of the yellow night. Fury of the Wolfman and the Manster. A new dimension in terror awaits in this sci-fi, horror, classics, 50 movie pack. Chilling viewing entertainment. And like uh, all these 50 movie sets, they put the disc in these little, little sleeves with a brief description. They tell you what's on each disc. It's about uh, four movies on disc. Uh, Film title, yeah, brief summary, star, year it was released, whether it's color, black and white, running time, and the rating. So, not going to give a great, uh, not really going to review each movie that's on here, but just my thoughts and my opinions of them. Disc one, you've got Alien Contamination, which I think is an Italian movie. Uh, released, I think originally just maybe Contamination, and I don't know if there's anything cut from this version or not. I'm, I think Blue Underground released the uh, complete version on DVD. I seem to remember my brother renting this on VHS back in 1980-something. Italian science fiction. Uh, don't really remember too much about it. Some kind of pods or something about basically yeah kind of yeah kind of like an alien ripoff but it's not bad no that's not Ian McCulloch from Echo and the Bunny Man <laughs> Alien Species from 1996 uh, I started watching this one low budget science fiction horror street to video crap that was really boring. I didn't like it. Atomic Rulers of the World, 1964. Starring Ken Utsui. Starman. Yeah, that's one of the Starman movies. Uh, I think there's quite a few of them. And Mill Creek has released uh, maybe all of them. I don't know if I watched all of that or not. I doubt it. The Alpha Incident. Can't remember who directed this. I wish it said. Uh, it's by the same guy that directed uh, Giant Spider Invasion. Give me just a moment. Uh, that's a strange one about a government working on some kind of virus, or they got some kind of thing that's uh, this guy. He's supposed to. I guess he's like a vial of it. He's on uh, this train. And uh, with no passengers. I think just this uh, virus or whatever thing it is. And uh, yeah, it's some kind of microscopic alien life form by train. There was an accident and the microorganism is unleashed. So it's like uh, just those two passengers on this train end up with another some guy and this woman are staying in this cafe or diner or some kind of thing and there's this other older fella so it's just five of them isolated in quarantine because they don't know if they're infected or not by this thing and uh, pretty good there's one particularly scene that's rather gory for a uh, for its time I was kind of surprised that 
involved in head crushing. I think that's what that, yeah, pretty pretty weird stuff. And you get that feeling. I like movies like that where it's like the sense of isolation and then kind of like a John, John Carpenter's The Thing. And I'm just going to check and see if I can find out who the director is on this. Let me turn down the music. That's from 1977. Uh, Bill Rabane, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's I thought that's who it was. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the same guy that did Giant Spider Invasion. A certain character actor on here, he's played like a, like a hobo type. He like comes in, what exactly on that train, Mr. Shorenstein? I'm looking at Wikipedia. Oh, damn it. I'm trying to find it like a cast. Is it George Buck Flower? Flower? That might be it. Uh, he had a, has a guy, he did a lot of bit parts in movies. Um, I know he's in uh, They Live, John Carpenter's They Live. Okay, so moving on to disc number two. We've got Attack from Space, which is another yeah, that's another Star Starman movie, 1964. Beast of Yellow Night, Filipino-made horror movie, strange one. Some guy makes a uh, makes a deal with the devil to uh, stay alive, and unfortunately, he ends up turning into a monster, kind of like a werewolf-type character. Ends up killing a bunch of people there. 1971. Yeah, that's a good little movie, a little horror movie. Warriors of the Wasteland. Italian exploitation, kind of like a road white ripoff of Fred Williamson and that little boy that's in. Oh, he's in House by the. Lucio Fulci's House by the Cemetery. He's in A Blade in the Dark, which I think is Lamberto Abava. Werewolf Woman. That was a weird movie. I was kind of surprised by some kind of a, some of the language in here. <laughs> Uh, and I think this is one that's had an official release, so I'm going to have to see, find that. It's probably uncut. Woman, uh, so that she's, is she really a werewolf, or is she just crazy? To be honest, I really don't remember. I've only seen it once, but I'll have to watch it again. Disc 3. All the Kind Strangers. Pretty sure it was made for TV movie. Starring Mr. Stacy Keach, again one of my favorite actors. Uh, I think he plays like a photojournalist, and he comes across a little boy. He's driving past him, and he, and he takes him back home. And they live out way out in the boondocks somewhere. And uh, they pretty much uh, there's him and his brothers and sisters, and they keep him hostage. And uh, Andre's a woman there, and the woman is played by. Damn, I don't remember her name. But I think she's in The Brood, if you know that movie. I think she's a British actress. Uh, anyway, they keep both of them there. And it turns out they've, they're have they not the first uh, couple to have been held hostage there. I guess they're basically looking for new parents, and they decide, well, do we keep them, or do we, do we let them go, or do we kill them? And you'll have to watch it to see what happens. The Day the Sky Exploded, 1958. Don't, I really don't remember any of this one. I remember a lot of these are... If they don't keep my attention like in the first 15 or 20 minutes, I give up and move on to something else. Mm -hmm. The Nightmare Never Ends, also known, I think, as Night Train to Terror or something. Yeah, it's a strange movie. And I can't remember how the two, how the two of them uh, differ. 
maybe the night train to terror has the segments where they're actually on the train with God and Satan having like a, I don't know if they're, know if they're playing chess or whatever, playing for these souls of these people. There's something weird about a, about a guy who is a, Cameron Mitchell's a cop, he's investigating, he's trying to, this guy was a, he's a, he was a Nazi back then, but he's still alive in present day and he hasn't aged. And it turns out he's actually the devil. And there's something involving heart transplants. And yeah, I can't, like I said, I can't remember how much footage, how much the two movies differ. Um, one of these other Mill Creek sets has, does have Night Train to Tear or, or whatever it's called. So maybe I'll go in and go over it in greater detail and I do a review of that set. But it's pretty good. I like it. Counter Blast, 1948. Another one I don't remember at all. Disc 4. Embryo with Rod Hudson. This is a strange movie. Yeah, they try and he's experimenting with DNA and he comes up with a... I think he creates a woman. And I don't know if there's somebody... Create, creates a dog, and there's like a scene where there's like this dog fetus. It's just, I don't know, it's creepy. And something about a little a human fetus, and one, one part of human fetus gets knocked out of the, gets knocked out of the, uh, whatever container it's in, and falls and splashes, and it's on the floor, and it just, uh, something about that scene, just creepy. End of the world. I saw this at the theater. My dad took me to see this when it first came out. And the advertisement had like this weird alien face and like the I can't remember what it was, but probably mentioned something about starring Christopher Lee. Uh, weird goings on at this church. And Christopher Lee plays like the priest, and there's these nuns, and uh, some guy I don't know if he's working, he's working for NASA or, or what it is. I'm just a scientist, and it's about signals from outer space and he's trying to investigate find out where they're coming from and uh, uh, does the world actually end in this like I said you'll have to watch and find it for yourself <laughs> I think I can still remember what I was eating when I saw this for the first time at the theater I think I had a Butterfinger candy bar and maybe one of those orange square shooter lollipops that's 1977. Death Warmed Up, which I think is another one my brother rented on VHS a long time ago. I'm not sure is that an Australian movie. Some weird zombies. Some about zombies. Uh, I don't remember it very well. Doomsday Machine, 1972. Sorry, another one I don't remember watching. Or if I do remember watching, if it's the one I think it is, people staying up in this cabin. Somehow they're isolated. And, like, really nothing much happens. Yeah, I'm not sure, but that might be another Bill Rebane movie. We've got Eternal Evil here, 1985. Is that the one with the Karen Black? Yeah, that's a strange one. That's about all I remember. I don't know, is it sleep? something about sleepwalking, or he suffers from these nightmares or something. Yeah, I think a lot, most of these I've only seen once, and some of my memories of them aren't that, aren't that clear. Evil of Rain from Outer Space, we get yet another Starman movie. Shadow of Chinatown from 1936. Boring, didn't watch it, but Bela Lugosi is in it. The War Game. It says it's an Academy Award winning documentary is produced by the BBC that was deemed too graphic and controversial to be shown in tele television. Now, that description actually sounds kind of interesting, but I think they went to watch it and it's, it's, not even, it's not what it is, it's something entirely different. <clears throat> Idaho Transfer from 1973, Keith Carradine. Oh, what a strange movie this was with these young folks doing some kind of laboratory where they could 
I don't know, they're, they're experimenting with teleporting or something or other, going back and forth. Time travel. The ending I liked. Oh, the ending was kind of weird. Here we go. Uh, this is disc six. Okay. Disc six. Good against evil. It seems like a way it ended. It seems like it maybe was supposed to be a pilot, and then maybe they hoped to go to a series. Because I think in, this guy was a, yeah, this guy was an exorcist. Some woman. What is her name? Sex in the City. Star Trek Six. Split Second. You know who I'm talking about. I can't remember. Can't, can't, remember, can't remember what her name is. Anyway, her. From 1977. Her uh, daughter gets possessed, and this guy is an exorcist. And helps helps him out. House of the Living Dead. This is like one of those horror anthology stories. A series, you know, it's got me three or four stories. Some are better than others. The one where it's like a school teacher and she's afraid of... She doesn't like kids, which makes a lot of sense. Hey, I teach kids for a living. Yet I'm, I, don't, I don't like them. So because of the house, she's terrorized by these kids. So another story in there is something about a... Some guy ends up getting locked in this building... Somehow he can't get find his way out. And there's something about a, a photographer who likes to... I don't know, he, he films his dates before he kills them or something. And, uh, and then a story about the supposedly the world's best, uh, what would you call them, detectives or forensic investigators. And they're always... Play, uh, Kind of hard to explain that one. Trying to uh, find find how to kill one another or something like that. Fairy of the Wolf Man with Paul Nashi, one of his you know, Spanish Wolf movies. You really can't go wrong with any of those. I've seen three or four of them. I like all of them, and I don't remember. I don't know which one this is in this series, but I think I've read that they that they aren't. Uh, it's not really a series because they aren't sequ they are aren't sequels to one another. Alien Zone. Yeah, I don't know what the heck that is. It's about experiment with transfer of souls between human beings. Crazy doctor has conducted his nefarious deeds upon even his own family members, including exchange of his own soul into his brother's body. This is another one as I started to watch it, but I gave up on. It's too boring. Disc 7, The Lost World, Silent. 925. <sighs> kind of boring. Maybe if they had actually added you know, like a music score to it, which maybe they did, I don't remember. This is not a test. 962. California deputy sheriff sets up a roadblock on a mountain highway leading to the city. He begins to stop motorists to inform them of some terrible news. A missile containing an atomic bomb is heading towards the city. The motorists and the deputy struggle with deciding on either finding shelter inside the back of a truck for possible survival or whether to go to the mountaintop to face the impending doom. Another boring one. And here we got uh, something called The Lost City from 1935. Excuse me. Maybe this was a serial. It might, must have been. It was 204 minutes. Yeah, it's at only three and a half hours. No way I can make it through that. I didn't even make it through the first half hour. Discate, Mistress of Atlantis with Brigitte Helm. 1932. Boy, that's an old one. 87 minutes. Didn't watch it. Night Fright. This is actually on another one of those, one of those Mill Creek sets. Some kind of ape-like creature. You don't really barely get to see the monster. There's a bunch of sheriff driving all around trying to solve this murder, trying to solve that murder. Kids in a, in the malt, malt shop sitting around, talking, probably dancing, drinking. 
Menace from Outer Space, Rocky Jones, oh god. I tried watching one of those one time, it was dull. Dolls can be. Masiste? Is that how you pronounce it? Masiste in Hell. This is pretty good. I like this. Yeah, a silent, mo silent movie. Okay. Silent uh, Fantasy. Bart Bar stars Bartolomeo Pagano. Yeah, that was a strange one. I'll have to watch that one again. Next up, we got disc nine. Piranha, Piranha. William Smith. Well, he really got around, didn't he? The guy's in a lot of movies. Two wildlife photographers are traveling through the Amazon River based on their latest assignment while trying to capture the wildlife of the area. On film, our photographers cross paths with a game hunter who is stalking the animals for another reason. Looking to eliminate the witnesses to illegal activities, the hunter decides to hunt the photographers in order to silence them. 1972. Figure if this may, may, maybe eight, even ten years later, it probably would have been a lot more graphic. Especially if it would have been an Italian film. Probably would have had cannibals in it. Phantom Creeps from 1939. Bela Lugosi didn't watch it. How Awful about Ellen, 970, Anthony Perkins. Didn't watch it. Panic from 1976, David Warbeck. <sighs> and then I tried to watch, but it was just too dull. So why even hold on, on to disc 9? Well, I'll probably watch Piranha Piranha again. Here we go, 10. Here's a Gene Autry movie. Nightmare Worlds. Gene Autry. Huh. Doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I didn't watch that one. Return of Dr. Mubuse. Is that how you pronounce it? Dirk Frobe. Played Goldfinger. This one was actually kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, 1961. That was all right. I liked it. I'd watch it again. Purple Death from Outer Space. Flash Gordon. So it must have been the... Must have taken the, like, the serials and made a movie out of it. But uh, I prefer the 1980 version with Sam Jones. First of the Lost Universe. That one again. This is actually on another one of those Creek sets. Richard Hatch from Battlestar Galactica. And a woman whose name I wish I could remember, but I keep forgetting. Which seems to be a habit. But when it, me when it comes to actresses. Uh, she's in Death Wish 4. Plays Charles Bronson's girlfriend in that one. She's in Initiation of Sarah. She plays Sarah in that. Um, seems like it was made for TV movie. I think John Saxon is in this. Somehow they end up... Oh, something about time travel or something. Or at least in another world, another reality. And try to get back home. It's pretty good. I probably actually watched it when it when it was on TV. Or I could just be imagining things. Star Odyssey. And uh, I don't know what it is with the Italians. Yeah, that's, we're on disc 11 now. But as I was saying, the Italian science fiction, I don't know what it is. It seems like they, they just... Never, I never saw one Italian science fiction movie that I liked. They did really good with westerns. I'm a huge spaghetti western fan. I might even actually do a review of some of the spaghetti western sets later. Of course, the Italian horror is good. Italian thrillers, or anyway, call them giallo, is what it's called. But Italian science fiction is dull. Probably, I guess they were probably trying to copy the success of Star Wars and. They had nowhere near the budget to work with. And I don't even remember watching this one. I mean, I don't even remember what happens in this one. I just know it was really dull. Stars Yanti Summer. Tear at the Red Wolf Inn. Another one I don't remember watching. Oh. Yeah, I think I do remember this one. College student. Well, some couples holding these young girls. 
seems like she's held prisoner and have a son, and she ends up falling in love with him. And uh, they try to escape. They want to escape and, and live their own li lives together. And Disc 11 actually has five movies. Robot Pilot, 1941. Of course, Tucker didn't watch it. Ring of Terror, 1962, didn't watch it. Frozen Alive, 1966, guess what? Didn't watch that one either. Last, here's the last disc, 12, The Manster. And this, too, is on another one of those movies, uh, another one of their sets. So there's some guy is in Japan, he gets him out, gets injected with some kind of stuff, and at one point, like he starts... Fix it. He starts going like a face or something. His shoulder is one part. He looks down and he has like a little eyeball. The yeah, Outfellow Target Earth, 1974. Okay. 1974. I don't remember watching that. I don't remember watching that one. Been considering it's science fiction from the 1970s. I'll have to get it, give it another try. You know, I was born in 71, so I grew up during the 70s and. So anything that's from the 70s, it's science fiction or horror, I'll, I'll at least give it a look. Doesn't mean I'll like it. Unknown World, 1951. I don't remember watching that one. And they... I don't remember watching that one either. Maybe I'm thinking of. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of an earlier movie that's on here. Yeah, I think that was the one with the a couple that I reckon just cabin. And I'm stuck there isolated because of uh, the different events that are going on on Earth. And I think maybe that's the one that was directed by Bill Ravine. So that's it. Seems like this isn't. Not as good as some of their other sets, because, yeah, a lot of these on here I said I hadn't even watched, or I did try to watch it, didn't make, them, make it all the way through, so. It's actually a pretty uh, cool cover, the artwork on there is like, like War of the Worlds. So if you're thinking about picking this one up, well, you might want to do your re research, and just to see what's on here. It's usually what I do. I look to see, I'll look online and see what movies are included and think, okay, does that, that sounds good, that sounds good, or this one doesn't sound so good, and some I know I never watch, or some of them I already have, and then I decide whether or not to buy it. Uh, don't remember what I paid, but it was probably maybe around 15 bucks or so. Uh, when was this released? This was released 2006. So, that's it for this review. And I'm going to do, let's see what we got over there. I think I have two more of these Mill Creek 50 movie sets. And I've got a Spaghetti Western set over there, but I'm looking at it, I'm not sure. Yes, I think that's a Mill Creek set too, so I'll probably end up doing that one. Alright, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.